Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about how you can go from working at your nine to five to becoming a millionaire. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube that talk about how you can go from zero to millionaire, but none of them talk about if it's possible while working a nine to five. So that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Is it possible? How can you do it? And how can you do it with only three investments? So we're gonna cover a couple topics. Number one, we're gonna start with how to save. Number two, we're gonna talk about credit. Number three, we're going to talk about debt. Number four, we're going to talk about investing and what those three investments are. And then five, we're going to talk about the order and how to do these things. And, and I'm not just going to give you generic general advice in here. I'm not just going to tell you you need to save, you need to build your credit, you need to pay off debt, you need to invest. That's pointless. I'm going to actually give you some tips on how to save and that's helped me save because I actually do work a nine to five right now. And, and this method, what I've been doing right here, helped me double my net worth this year. So it actually took me from uh, 50,000, actually more than double, 50,000 to $150,000 in net worth. I mean, I tripled my net worth using this. And uh, all while just working a nine to five. And now I just got started into real estate as a real estate agent so I can help others do the same and so I can increase my income and, and help this uh, process move along faster. But if I don't make any sales as a real estate agent, this process will still work. So let's look at what I'm doing and how I was able to triple my net worth in just one year working a nine to five. We're gonna go over some tips and tricks for saving. We're gonna go over how to build your credit um, tips to quickly improve your credit score. We're going to go over debt, but which debts are most important to pay off first so that you can invest. And then we're going to go over which investments are the best for building wealth and which ones you should do first and which ones you don't even need to worry about. So let's start with saving. All right, when it comes to saving, the most important thing or the way that you're gonna be able to save the most money, the biggest expense, is gonna come from housing. And there's really two ways that you can save on housing. One is by getting roommates, or two is by house hacking. Now, house hacking is obviously the better method, but not everyone can start with house hacking because in order to do this, you have to have money as a down payment, you have to already own a home, so this is actually what I did first. And this is what I would recommend is start by getting roommates, renting a room, and that way you're able to save more money. And then once you've saved up enough for a down payment, boom, you buy a house and then you house hack and you're able to actually save even more money. And now your net worth is growing. Uh, it's just a win-win all around. But this is how I started. This is how I got the money to do this, which tripled my net worth. All right, number two, credit cards. Yeah, I actually like to use credit cards. This, these ones won't have as big of an impact, but they're actually twofold, this, this credit card. It's gonna help with your credit score, but we're talking about saving right now. So get cash back credit cards. And there's different ones that you can get. You can get 1% on everything. There's other ones that have you know 3%, 5% on certain categories. So if you label them and you're following along and you're saying, okay, this one's for utilities, this one's for groceries, this one's for gas, you might end up just saving about 2% over the course of the year. And it might not sound like much, oh, 2%, big whoops. But 2% on the course of what you spend over a year, right? Maybe you're spending, I don't know, $20,000 over the course of a year. I mean, 2% on that, what's that? $500, $400. So, I mean, it, it helps. It's something. Everything adds up. And when you're working a nine to five, you have to start off by being super frugal. If you're not, if we're not talking about increasing your incomes, right? Because this video would be pointless if I just told you, Hey, how to become zero to millionaire while working a nine to five, get a second job, increase your income. So we're talking about how can you do it with your income, right? And we're assuming that you're making probably about under $100,000 a year. Uh, I know there's some that do make over $100,000, but for this example, let's assume that you're not. So cash back credit cards, it'll help save just a couple hundred dollars. Um, but again, the biggest impact is gonna be the housing situation. 
And uh, number three that's really helped me out a lot is using a tracker. You gotta come up with what works for you. My tractor wouldn't work for everybody, but you need to come up with some kind of budget tracker, right? You need to write out your necessities. Uh, okay, this, this is what my fixed income is every single month. This is what my rent is, it's the same every single month. This is what my car payment is, this is what my credit card bills are. Get all your fixed payments out the way, then get the stuff that's not a fixed payment, but it's a necessity as well. Put a budget for that. This is how much I'm gonna spend on groceries every single month. And then you can put together a little fun budget after that leftover of, hey, this is how much money I have for fun. And I like to include in the fun budget, well, mine's 45, that's why I wrote $45 a week. But in the fun budget, I like to include eating out, right? So if I go to eat out, I don't just include that in groceries because eating out will cost you a lot of money. So by eating in, you're gonna save a lot of money and when you include this in the fun budget, it just limits, right? If I only have $45 a week for eating out or for my fun budget, it just limits how much I can really eat out. And in the long run, that's gonna save you a lot of money. And I include everything else in there, right? Uh, if I'm going to like Disney World or I'm going to the movies, right? Anything fun, I'm going out for a drink. Whatever it is, if it's not a necessity, then it's going into the fun budget. Or if I, I go to the store and I'm buying something I don't need, I'm getting clothes, whatever it is, fun budget. All right, create something that works for you, look at your budget and make sure that you're still able to save enough afterwards in order to hit your goal of becoming a millionaire while working your nine to five. All right, so that covers everything for saving. Let's talk about credit. All right, I promised you that I was gonna give you guys some good tips here. Uh, first thing is, you, though, you gotta build your credit score before I give you the good tips. If you wanna build your credit score, get a credit card. I mean, if you don't have a credit card, it's gonna be tough. Um, but there's two ways that you can get a, a credit card if you don't already have one. The best options would be, see if you can get the Apple credit card, because they seem to have uh, lower standards or, or not as strict standards, probably a better way to put it, for getting approved for the credit card, and it's an unsecured credit card. So these would be great for improving your credit score. And what that means, right, because the only other alternative is to get a secured credit card. Secured means that Maybe they'll give you a $200 limit, but you had to give them $200 as a security deposit. So that's why unsecured is better. Um, but sometimes if you're not able to get approved for an unsecured, you have to start with secured. All right, and then for those of you who already have a credit card, right, and I want to get to the tips on how to improve it. Well, the biggest thing that's going to affect your credit score and have the biggest impact is going to be on time payments. So if you, if you miss payments in the past, if you've been late, forget about it. I mean, if it's been one time or if it was two times, call the credit bureau, uh, see if you can get that taken off and say, look, I've been on time for every other payment. This was just a one-time mistake. I, I didn't realize, I thought I had auto pay set on or whatever your situation was or why you missed the payment and see if you can get that taken care of and, and removed. If not, right, just make sure that you're paying on time going forward and even if it's only the minimum which ah that hurts that sucks i don't want you to pay the minimum but it's better than not paying and being late all right now how to improve your credit score fast make payments twice a month even though it's only due once a month right and you might have auto pay on where it's going to automatically pay it if you pay twice a month your credit score will improve and it will improve fast and big all right, so that eliminates savings and credit. Now let's talk about debt. Let's say you've got, we're gonna talk about which, which one's the most important to pay off. So let's say you've got a credit card debt of 18% interest rate and your minimum payment a month is $50. Then you've got student loans and let's say they're 5%. And let's say your student loans are $100 or maybe $150, $150 a month. And then you've got your car payment, which is also 5% at $300 a month. Or no, we'll say, we'll say $250 a month. 
All right, so out of these, you know, a lot of other financial channels might say this is the smartest one to pay off first, the highest interest rate, and then out of these two, maybe this one because it's the higher payment. Uh, but I'm going to say pay off your car payment first because it's the bigger payment. It's harder to get more car debt, right? It's easier to go and get more credit card debt once you've paid it off. It doesn't take uh, very much insight in order to just rack that credit card up some more, but it's going to take a little bit more work to go get another uh, car loan. But pay off this debt because it's going to affect your ability to invest in real estate. Right? Your debt to income ratio might be too high when you have big debt payments. So this, by lowering this, this will have the greatest impact on your ability to invest. So that's why we want to pay this one off first. So that eliminates the talk for debt. Now let's get into the good stuff. Right? Let's get into investing. So invest. You, we're going to talk about just four main investment vehicles. And which ones we're going to invest in and when. So we've got an HSA, we've got a 401k slash a raw, we've got just regular stocks. Now the difference between these two, right, the 401k, this is kind of like, this is through your work, this is where you're getting the employer match. Stocks are maybe you're doing it on your own, you're going on Robinhood or M1 Finance and you're, you're picking your own individual stocks. And then four is the beloved real estate. All right. So when you're saving money, right? When you're working a nine to five, it's going to be tough. You, you're with your salary, with my salary, you're not able to max out your 401k and max out your HSA and invest in stocks and save money in order to have a down payment for real estate. You're trying to do all four of those at once. Not going to happen. So you have to prioritize. So don't invest in your 401k or Roth. Don't do that. Not until, it's not time yet. That's, this is what I did. HSA, put just enough money in there for what you're actually going to probably spend on medical a year. Now HSA is a great tool and 401k is also a great tool. Later on, once we have these two more established, then we'll go back to these. But HSA, for those of you who don't know, what the HSA will allow you to do. It allows you to pay your medical expenses tax-free, but it also allows you to invest that money. Uh, it, it's, it's another another video, another topic. Um, just know for now, we're not going to use the HSA. We're not going to use the 401k slash Roth yet. Uh, stocks and real estate are what we're going to start with. So as we're saving money each month, we're going to put that money into stocks in order for it to grow while we're saving for a down payment for real estate. So the money that we're saving for a down payment for real estate is going into stocks. And then once we have enough money, then we take that money and put it into real estate. Again, the method that I did. All right, so now we've covered when to invest and why. Let's take a look at an example. Let's take somebody who makes, say, $5,000 a year, and let's see what you would save and what you'd have left over to invest in, and how this would work out in a real life example. So you've got, let's say, $1,000 in taxes. So this is a monthly, $1,000 a month. So you got $1,000 in taxes, uh, and then we've got $700 in rent, right? So this person's renting right now. They have roommates. That's why that's the price of their rent uh, and, and utilities. And we've got our car payment, we said was 250. Then we've got our credit card of $50 a month. We've got our groceries, right? And this doesn't include eating out, of uh, $400 a month. And then we've got miscellaneous, right? Doctor's appointments. Um, whatever else I, I could have forgotten, $500 a month. And then we've got our fun budget of $200 a month, which is $50 a week. All right, you can create your own fun, fun budget, see what this works on here. You know, if you've got uh, even smaller and lower expenses, you can probably increase your fun budget. Or if you've got bigger expenses, you, you might need to decrease your fun budget. 
or if your income or your taxes, whatever. You gotta play with the numbers so it works for you. So that way you make sure that you have enough at the end of the year to eventually be able to invest and become a millionaire. So we're left with $1,800 a month that we can essentially save and, and put into stocks and, and save aside and, and eventually invest into real estate. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the only three investments that you need to make in order to become a millionaire. The first one is going to be a two bedroom house. It's gonna be a condo, single family, townhouse, doesn't matter. You're gonna buy a two bedroom house and then you're going to house hack. You're gonna rent out the other room so that way you can save up more money for the second investment. But let me give you a timeline of, of what this would look like and when you would buy this and, and how much this would cost. So let's say you're starting at 23, but you've got debt and you've got to build your credit and you've got to save up money for this first down payment. So let's say that all takes you about four years and you're 27 when you make this first purchase. So what I want you to do is find something below market value, find something that needs work and that you can fix it up yourself. This is what I did with this one here. So let's say you get something that's worth or would be worth 250K if it were fixed up, but you're able to buy this thing for $200,000 because it just needs some cosmetic work that you can do yourself after work. So you're getting this below market value and when you're buying something that's your primary residence, you don't have to put 20% down. In fact, for your first one, you can put as little as 3.5% down and in some cases 3% down. But let's go with 3.5. And I like to include closing costs. So closing costs might run you about 3%. So we're gonna say 6.5% down. So all you need is $13,000 and you're able to get into this first investment. All right, now you're going to rent out that other room that you have, you're going to save up some more money and let's say it takes you about two years to save up more money so you can do this again. So now you're 29. So investment one at 27, investment two at 29. So at 29, you're going to buy something a little bit bigger. You're gonna get a three bedroom. And that three bedroom is gonna be more expensive because it's bigger, it's been a couple years of appreciation in the market. So this thing is gonna be worth 325. But we're not gonna pay 325 for it because this is an investment. So we're going to get it below market value and we're only going to pay 250 for it. And we're going to fix it up, do the same thing that we did here on the first one, right? And we're still going to put less down, but you can only do the three and a half percent down one time. It's called an FHA loan. You only get one FHA loan. So now we have to go conventional. So you have to put down 5%. So we're going to put 5% down on this which it's still, it's, it's not gonna be that much money. It's gonna be, including your closing costs too, it's gonna be $20,000. But again, we had two years to save this up, so that's about $10,000 each year. Uh, and, and if you weren't able to save it, there's other ways that you can buy this property. There's home equity lines of credit, you could refinance, but we're gonna keep it simple here and just assume that you're being frugal and saving. I don't wanna complicate this video. So now you're into this one, 20K. Right, and now let's say we're gonna buy investment property number three. But let's say that one takes you a little bit more to save up for. Let's say it takes you three years, right? But this is also investment number three. So you're 32 years old when you buy the third investment. And we are going to buy, let's go, let's go up here. I know this, this thing is a mess. We buy property number three. It's going to be a four bedroom. And this property is going to be worth 375, right? We've had some appreciation in the market. The house is bigger, so it's more expensive, but we're gonna buy this below market value, 290. And now it's easier to get bigger spreads in between the numbers when the price of the houses are more expensive. So that's why we're seeing bigger and bigger spreads each time that we're moving up in the price of the home. And on this one, we're, we're able to actually do the 5% down again. Right, so we're moving into all of these properties each time, right? We bought this one, renting out a room to save some money. 
then we're renting this house out in order to qualify for the next one and buy this one with only 5% down. Then we're doing the same thing. We're renting that one out and moving into this one. You only have to do this three times, guys, and then you're done. You can keep going if you want to be a multimillionaire. So now we put 5% down, which is going to be about $23,000, including your closing costs, guys. That's everything included in there. Now, I'm not even including your fix-up because there's renovation loans out there that you can get. But let's say we did want to include your fix-up. All right, let's take a look at what that would look like. Let me clear this space. You'd probably be at 15K for the first investment. So 13 plus 15. Then you'd probably be at, for a three bedroom, that would probably also run you about 15K to fix up. And then for the four bedroom, it's a little bit bigger, right? That might run you about 20K to fix up. Doing this yourself. You could probably can get a little bit cheaper. I just like to be conservative. Okay, so all of these added up together, it's gonna run you about $106,000. But remember, from 23 to 32, we had nine years. So we had nine years to save up that $106,000, which comes out to $11,777 a year. Now remember, we're able to save up $1,800 based off of that example I gave in the beginning every single month, which comes out to a little over $20,000 a year. So this is cake. We're doubling what we need to save there. Now, I know these numbers don't look like you're a millionaire yet, but let me show you how we end up turning this into a, a million dollars. All right, so I just wanted to show you here that it's very doable to save up the money needed based off of that $5,000 salary in order to buy these three properties. Totally doable. All right, now we're going to take a look at how these properties turn into a million dollars. Because right now, yeah, it maybe looks like you made a, you know, $50,000, $100,000. You might have tripled your net worth, but you're probably not a millionaire yet. So this is what happens, right? We started at 23 paying off our debt. We started buying our first one at 27, next one at 29, next one at 32. And now I promised us that we're gonna be a millionaire by 20 years. So by 43, we're supposed to be a millionaire. And that's what's going to happen. So we bought this first property at 27, right? It was worth 250 when we bought it. We only paid 200 for it. Well, that's had 16 years of appreciation. So from 27 to 43 is 16 years. On average, real estate goes up three to 5% a year. So let's go in the middle with 4%. If you add 4% appreciation every year to this 250, that house is going to be worth 400 and $68,000 once you're 43 years old. And now, remember, we only put $200,000, we only bought it for $200,000, and that mortgage has been paid off every single year by the tenants that we rented it out to. So after 16 years of mortgage and principal pay down, we now only owe $119,000 left on the property leaving us with $349,000 of net worth on property number one. So now, right, we're starting to get a little idea of how this works. So let's take a look at what property two would have yielded us. Remember, we bought property two for $325. And this one had a little bit less years. It only had 14 years of appreciation and principal pay down because we bought it two years later. Uh, but it's still a more expensive property, so the appreciation on this is going to be pretty high still. So this is going to be worth $562,000 once we're 43. Remember, we bought this one at a deal as well. We only paid $250 for it. So after 14 years of principal pay down, we're only going to owe $161,000 on it, which is going to leave us with $401,000 of equity. And now number three. Uh, we bought the last property, the four bedroom, was 375, right? And after that one, we waited another three years. So from 32 to 43, we had 11 years of appreciation. So that one, blocked it off. That one is going to be worth, uh, what do I, 
$577,000. And remember, we got this one at a good deal as well. We only put two ninety dollars down. So now after 11 years of principal pay down, we only owe $203,000, leaving us with a total equity of three hundred and seventy-four dollars in our property. Right, so when you add up all these numbers, let's do some quick math together on the calculator. 349,000 plus 401,000 plus 374 leaves us with $1,124,000. All right, so now we're 43 years old. We have a net worth of $1,124,000. You can quickly see that that number is going to grow by the time you're 65. You can be more aggressive and make this number even bigger or even faster. But if you want to know how to convert this net worth, this million dollars, into uh, passive income and actually kind of be able to retire at 43, I have another video that breaks down exactly how to retire early through real estate. So check that one out. If you guys want to see more, uh, in-depth knowledge and, and videos on how can you get into a property when maybe you don't have a good credit score or you don't have enough income or your, your debt to income ratio is too high. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I can definitely make some more videos on that and provide some more information. So thanks again. If you liked the video, comment, subscribe, give it a thumbs up.